So in the early permanent dentition, first of all, we need to consider that the, the, this patient is going for the uh, camouflage versus surgery. If the deformity of the and the retrusion of the maxilla is extreme and severe enough, then this patient is categorized and selected for the future surgical management or the destruction of stenosis can be started in the, uh, in the early permanent dentition as well. However, if the orthognathic surgery is planned, this is planned in the late teens for uh, the completion of the growth and and the and, and after the completion of the impact of scarring or the surgical negative ins, uh, inserts on the, uh, the growth and development of the maxilla. So, uh, in the early permanent dentition, you will be having a cross bite, anterior cross bite, and posterior cross bite by the effect of the scarring tissue in the in the in, uh, while doing the palatal repairs, etc., etc., and the disturbance of the dental lamina would be leading to the malalignment of the uh, anterior and the posterior teeth. So, what you do in the orthodontics in the if first of all, if you have to uh, decide either this case is going to be planned and prepared for the surgery, orthognathic surgery, or for the camouflage in the early permanent edition. Secondly, the major decisions are taken for the space closure in this and in, in, in the anterior aesthetic zone or the space opening of the anterior aesthetic zone. Normally, uh, normally when the uh, the when the uh, canine erupt into the cleft area, space closure is preferred. However, when the maxilla, uh, the lip is too much retrosive and there is a very concave profile, then a space opening is preferred in case of the retrosive upper lip. So, uh, however, we have to consider the, the factor of the stability because of the increased tonicity of the uh, upper lip after the cleft and because of the scarring tissue. We cannot go uh, for the uh, for the greater extent of the proclination of uh, upper labial segment because this would lead to increased pressure from the labial expect by, by the scarred upper lip. So this case would be inherently unstable and the long-term retention or the lifetime reduction might be required uh, if you go for the so much labial movement of the upper teeth in order to provide some spaces for the, in order to provide space for implant and other, the other variables are considered uh, what we do in the early uh, permanent dentition uh, in or by with the help of the orthodontic we align the abutments uh, so we could have like parallel abutments around the cleft area if you are going to replace or restore uh, any missing tooth in the in the cleft segment by the bridge or uh, if if you are going to do a fixed rest restoration by the help of the bridge then the abutment should be aligned and the orthodontist do some very important role by the vertical alignment of the vertical parallelism of the abutment tooth uh, and if you go for the space closure then um, uh, allow the eruption of the uh, um, erupting tooth as close as possible to the central incisor or as close as possible to the uh, cleft area or, the, or through the grafted bone. So you have to do a minimal orthodontics for the space closure. However, with the help of your orthodontic, you sometimes you do the space closure as well. And the space opening, we do uh, two different process. Just a minute. In the space uh, opening, uh, we have like, we have to align the abutment teeth. And if we are going to provide a resin bonded uh, replacement and this is more helpful as compared to the fixed restoration. The resin bonded uh, and semi -per uh, permanent uh, resin uh, bridge are preferable till the uh, uh, as compared to the permanent bridge till the age of 18 years. 18, 19, 20 साल की age के बाद से जो है वो आप permanent bridge लगाएं तो ज़्यादा बेहतर है उससे पहले अगर लगाने तो semi permanent fill by the resin bonded bridge करेंगे. Teen late teens में हमने क्या करना है? We have to just do orthognathic surgery and for the orthognathic surgery the the role of the orthodontist uh, could be uh, the preparation of the uh, preparation of the uh, advancement and the uh, uh, mandibular setback. Uh, in the late teens, as the result of the scar tissue by the surgery, would be having like the return of the original uh, return of the anterior and the lateral cross bite due to the effect of the scarring on the future growth. So, uh, as there is in this in, in most of the cleft patient, the mandible is not at fault, as we normally see in the genetic involvement of the class three patient, where the mandible is is at fault. In most of the in most in most of the cleft patient. Uh, 
the maxilla is at fault due to the fact of the scarring by the fact of the surgery uh, so you have to move the maxilla down and forward but as there is so much scarring the movement of the maxilla in the anterior plane is limited by the soft tissue because considering the factor of the stability and the posterior uh, on the posterior part by the vpi vasophalangeal insufficiency because the great uh, uh, or the the greater the move, uh, the greater the movement of the uh, maxilla anteriorly the greater would be the chances of vasophalangeal insufficiency so in order to decrease the amount of the advancement of maxilla we have to perform uh, two different kind of uh, surgery one is the mandibular setback mandibular setback uh, is decreased the required amount of mandible maxillary advancement so this will help you to uh, re to reduce the requirement of the maxillary advancement the second layer is after the maxillary advancement which may lead to development of the vasopharyngeal insufficiency and the hypernasality of the sound we have to consider then the pharyngeal graft to uh, for the management of the uh, vpi and the and the hypernasality so uh, the, the latest in the latest advancement we have the decrease the number of the uh, orthognathic surgery and decreasing orthognathic surgery is just because of the uh, is because of the refined surgeries are provided in the early ages so the refined surgery is leading to a relatively normal growth as compared to the past okay so the atraumatic palatal surgery minimizes the interferences with the growth however secondly uh, with the closure of the space uh, where the teeth are missing the alveolar bone graft uh, in the alveolar bone graft so the prosthodontic replacement is gradually decreasing that's all about the uh, management of the cleft in the adult age in the adult we do the orthognathic surgery in the early permanent dentition we plan the case for orthognathic surgery versus camouflage we do orthodontic we align the teeth and we uh, uh, close the spaces or we open the spaces for the restoration or by implant or uh, by the permanent bridge which are normally provided at the age of 18 17 years however uh, you plan for a space opening and a space closure in the early permanent dentition in the mixed dentition the mixed dentition is is characterized by the uh, preparation for alveolar bone graft so uh, for the preparation of the alveolar bone graft you do alignment of the uh, incisors and keep the incisors away from the uh, keep the incisors away from the cleft area and you expand the collapse uh, uh, maxillary uh, uh, collapse arches to provide space for the surgery and to provide to uh, fill up as much as uh, bone as possible okay that's all for the management of the cleft patient